Good morning. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, Dean Matthews. Um, and thanks to all of you for being here and for what you do in support of uh, forests and forest science, um, which at its best is in support of good forest policy and forest management. It's a delight to be with you here. Always good to be back at my alma mater and to see old friends, well, not that any of you are old, uh, and to meet new ones in the uh, Forest Ecosystem Monitoring Cooperative. A uh, year after the release of the fourth National Climate Assessment, there really is limited debate now uh, about whether humans have a role in causing climate change. So now we can get on with the important business of figuring out what we're going to do about it. Uh, here in the Northeast, indeed, we're expecting to feel the effects of climate change faster and more severely than many other places in the country. Um, the National Climate Assessment says by 2035, the Northeast is projected to be 3.6 de degrees warmer on average during the, than the pre-industrial era. This would be the largest increase in the contiguous U.S. Uh, and would occur as much as two decades before global average temperatures reach a similar increase. Um, these changes will have immediate, clearly, immediate and long-term impacts on our forest ecosystems. It's um, some seriously grim stuff, for sure, and we are in actually beginning to notice. Um, many of you, I, I hope, have heard me boast that Vermont is forest strong, uh, a reference to just how important our forests are and just how much value and benefit accrues to all of us from healthy, intact, productive forests. Um, and uh, here in the Northeast, I think we're lucky uh, to live in a place and an eco a landscape dominated by forests that are generally have been remarkably resilient uh, through centuries of human settlement. Uh, the resulting impacts on our landscape, our forests have demonstrated this remarkable resilience. This is the part where I'm trying to introduce a little hope and optimism here, folks. Um, it isn't news to anyone uh, that we're facing an ecological crisis without precedent in our time. Um, but in the basic ability of our forests, to respond, I, I'd like to think, um, and in the impressive work of people like you, researchers, scientists, managers, uh, forest stewards of all kinds, I, I would indeed like to think there is hope. Can we share in that hope, that there is hope? Indeed, there are many people working on how we can help our forests. We know that forests are at once um, vulnerable to climate change. They're also part of the solution uh, in mitigating atmosphere, carbon dioxide, and the effects of climate change. So we have people working on ways to resist, adapt, transition. Um, but in many ways, this is really still a new science emerging. Uh, how do we, many questions, how do we invest the limited and important resources that we have correctly uh, with the best impact and outcomes? How do we know what is working? How do we then use that knowledge to inform policy and management, to hold it all together. Um, I think that's a, a place where it, it puts a light on the importance of monitoring over long term in a rigorous and scientific way. Um, we're fortunate to have many local, regional, and national resources, such as uh, Climate Adaptation Science Centers and the Northern Institute of Applied Cli Climate Science diving into understanding uh, possibilities for bringing science and management, uh, for science to management and policy. Um, uh, I'd like to note that uh, at, in state government, uh, and I think which includes the executive branch where I work, and as well as the legislature, there really is new attention focused on this and people leaning in kind of climate with a climate lens in all policies. Uh, I, 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 I'm really th thrilled to announce that we've received approval and funding to establish a, a new forester position within the department uh, to focus on climate change and to kind of help us uh, make it the, the, the lens and make it run through all of our work in the department and indeed throughout the agency, which, uh, is, right Nancy, that's, that's what we need to do. And we uh, have limited capacity and limited resources and I'm really thrilled to announce that we'll be going to recruitment for a position to um, kind of pick up where the legendary Sandy Wilmot, you could say, left off when she retired. Uh, she was our hub and our uh, link to, uh, and our conscience for climate science and uh, I'm really excited to be able to rebuild that capacity uh, in a small way, but, but hopefully taking some large steps. 
Uh, in today's political environment, there's certainly a need for local leadership and I think experimentation uh, to figure out how we can manage forests and all the, the waters and wildlife uh, functions of our forested ecosystems for the benefit of those systems to maintain them and for the people who depend on them, all of us in our communities. Uh, it's such an important part of our state and our region. Um, and so I think this leads to two key questions that the plenary session here is, uh, is attempting to address and put light on. Where, uh, number one, what can we do to continue to monitor for signs of change in our ecosystems as climate change impacts start to manifest? And two, how do we monitor the effectiveness of our management efforts designed to prepare forested ecosystems for climate change? I think we're really fortunate to have two excellent speakers with us here this morning to address these questions.